Hi everyone, it's Liddy, and today I'm going to be doing a kind of collective haul. Some of these volumes I've had for a while, as well as a small package that Yen Press sent me a while ago. You may have seen some of the volumes in one of my YouTube shorts, but I never really talked about them in a video before, so I'm going to share that with you today. But yeah, I have a few packages that I haven't opened yet, so some from this, and I do have a sci-fi a small sci-fi order that i made that i want to unbox as well if you haven't already check out sci-fi they do a lot of good manga deals at the moment considering that manga is constantly going up in price it's one of the websites that has stayed consistent in terms of trying to keep manga at you know affordable prices we love it there over on the manga do this discord and i also have a code that you can use for 10% off your order, which I will put up here. But yeah, definitely check that out. And let's get into the video. So, some of the manga that I want to go through first is probably the ones that Yampra sent me. So the first one is, uh, My Mate is a Feline Gentleman. This one, I actually read and it is like kind of like an Omegaverse BL story. And it also has obviously anthropomorphic characters i think that's how you say it but i'm not super into those kind of romances like beast with humans i haven't read much about it or on that kind of topic so i'm not like super into them but this one was cute it was a lot more wholesome than i expected but it's about this guy he basically is kind of used as a slave for like pleasing people if you know what i mean and he gets sent to this person's house and he actually treats him really nicely and kindly and then i'm a little bit confused in terms of the omegaverse alpha aspect of it and why he's a danger to him but yeah i thought it was cute i'm not sure if i'll continue it but yeah i'm thank you for yen press for sending it to me anyway <laughs> and then another one that yen press sent me was i don't know which is love which is a gl a manga about a girl who doesn't know what love is and she finds all these girls that she meets in her college really attractive but she's trying to find out which one is actually love and if it's just infatuation and yeah i heard it's quite a cute gl some people said it was okay i think it was suki notes who said that it was okay um, they enjoyed it, but it wasn't anything groundbreaking, but I am excited to have it, so yeah. And another one Yen Press sent me was Cuckoo's 3. I think this is a graphic novel that was printed by Yen Press, I think? I'm not 100% sure. But this one also looks like it is a queer romance between two males, so interested to try this one out as well. And those were the three books that Yen Press sent me. They did send me another one, which was also a BL, but I gave that away to Caketons during our Manga Dudettes meetup, so I haven't got that one. But yeah, those are the three that Yen Press sent me, so thank you Yen Press so much for sending me these books. And the next ones I'm going to go into are some of the pre-orders that I had. Obviously, these books are not new anymore, because I haven't filmed a video in a very long time, so these won't be new releases, but... They were some of the pre-orders that I had in Forbidden Planet. So the first one is Oshinoko Volume 3. Of course, I think everyone and their mother knows what Oshinoko is at the moment. I mean, when I read the first volume, I had a feeling that it was going to blow up, and it did. Especially because of the anime. I think everyone is really, really <laughs> enjoying it. But it is kind of like a revenge... Uh, it's like a reincarnation, then revenge story. There is a like reincarnation at the start, which is a little bit strange, but then it becomes into a revenge story. I would say read this without knowing anything about it is the best way. I think that will give you the most enjoyment and shock value. So I would recommend reading this without knowing too much about it, which is what I did when I read volume one because no one else was talking about it at the time. So yeah, I really enjoyed this and excited to continue and see where the story develops. And then I got The Other Worlds, books depend on the bean counter. This one, I actually read volume one and th one to three not long ago, and I absolutely loved it. I think this is gonna be one of my favorite series of this year. It is a BL fantasy 
but it focuses on more of a romance subplot than anything else. Actually, I kind of think maybe it's more like 50-50, but it gets um, more romantic throughout this story. So, but yeah, this one is about, it's about this guy, Kondo. He is an accountant and he's pretty much a workaholic and he only lives to work. But then he tries to save someone from a truck and then gets hit as well and then gets reincarnated in this other world and he basically doesn't know how to relax and he gets appointed as an assistant to this uh, accounting place in the palace and he's like yeah i want to work i don't want to just sit and laze about because he does get a salary for coming with like the other girl who got reincarnated because the other girl is dubbed as the holy maiden so he comes and tags along and obviously he gets a salary for it but he wants to do his work in this world and try to fix their problems within the accounting and finance department because there's a lot of things that aren't working well within their finance finance department as well as like their budgets and things like that so he's trying to solve it and make it better and then he ends up kind of crossing paths with this knight called Aresh and they are they are interwoven through a series of events and it is just great it is like it has a little bit of like um pining and a little bit of like well i can i can see a little bit of angst but you know it's just there are just there's some tropes in here that i really 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 enjoy and I'm super loving and I can't wait for the next volumes. I know they're coming out really slowly, so it's going to be painful. But really, really recommend this one if you like BL fantasy. Yeah, even if you don't like Izakai, I would recommend this. Because I know a lot of people have been enjoying it as well. And another pre-order I had was Touring After the Apocalypse. This is a really great Slice of Life manga about two... Well, one girl who is human and one girl who is not really human. And they kind of tour along the cities of Japan seeing what's remaining and what's left over and if they can find any food and resources to keep them going throughout their journey and it is like hinting at something a little bit more like sadder but I haven't continued the series yet apart from volume one but I really love volume one and the art style is really pretty let me show you yeah I really enjoy it I think it's really really cute so far and I do really like the journey that they're taking and it's also a really unique concept where they're touring after the apocalypse happened and you can see like what Japan is like now. And the next pre-order I had was Requiem of the Rose King volume 17. This one is the final volume of this series and I still haven't got volume 3 so I haven't been able to start reading or binge this series yet but I know Himeka from the manga Dudettes really love this series so obviously I've been collecting it. And yeah, this is the last volume. So once volume three finally comes in stock, I can read the whole series. Okay, and that was all the pre-orders I had for throughout the few months that I haven't been filming. And then let's move on to some of the volumes that I got to fill my gaps. So I've got Requiem of the Rose King volume two. I bought this with a Waterstones discount that I had and it finally shipped and arrived. It took a while, I think, it's taken a while for some of the Requiem of the Rose King restocks to come back. So yeah, this is volume two. And then I got Banana Fish volume 10. This is, I think, I think I've pretty much finished my Banana Fish collection now with this volume. So that's pretty exciting. And now I have the whole series, which I can binge. So yeah, really exciting. And then another volume I got recently was My Girlfriend's Child volume two. I read the first volume and really enjoyed it. It's basically about teen pregnancy and how these two, this couple is dealing with her becoming pregnant at such a young age. And it's very, the art style is very like, it's watercolored. It kind of feels like a watercolor, very sketchy style. And it deals with the topic of teen pregnancy quite well and quite realistically. So yeah, I'm really excited to see how this plays out. And then I've got a package from Amazon and it is the Summer Hikaru Died. So my husband got me this because I was waiting for it to come back in stock in Sci-Fi and it like kept delaying and delaying and it still didn't come back in stock. So he just got it for me on Amazon. 
but yeah it's kind of scuffed it's a little scuffed at the bottom so i'm gonna definitely speak to amazon about that really shame but this one is also something that has blown up in japan everyone is talking about it it's pretty much you know everyone wants to read it and i think it is it is classified as a bl horror which is very interesting because i've never i've never heard of a story that is you know categorized as a bl horror really interested to read it i mean it's so popular right now in japan so there must be a reason why so yeah and then i got a package from blackwells and it is Kimi ni Tadoke volume 21. I've been continuously collecting Kimi ni Tadoke when I can. I also saw this volume for like £5.30 pence, so I ended up getting it. But everyone kind of knows what this series is about, so if you're a shoujo fan, you'll have known what Kimi ni Tadoke is. And that's all the parcels that I have on that and the pre orders, and now I have a box of goodies from sci-fi so a box and yeah let's open it up okay really exciting so first one we've got is we can't just do plain love volume 2 very spicy cover i like that but basically this is an office romance and it is obviously 18 plus and it is a series about these people who work in the same office and one has a smell fetish and one also has a kind of difficult time being around women because he gets like aroused really easily when he's around women due to something that happened in his past i don't exactly remember what it was but these two decide to make a pact in trying to help each other um, so she's trying to help him overcome his problem with women and he's helping her with her smell fetish basically because he she really likes his scent so as you can tell something will probably happen in terms of romance blooming but yes i really like the first volume and excited to try the second one and then i got my happy marriage volume four this is a series that i absolutely love the first volume was my all-time favorite mangas of 2022 so you know how much i love it i i love it so much and i pretty much read the the scans when i wore when it before it ever got licensed and i read all the chapters and absolutely loved it and cried and things like that so i was so happy when it got licensed i know the anime is also blowing up across the world and everyone is enjoying it so i'm really really happy that it's getting the recognition that it deserves because it is amazing definitely check it out if you're in for like a cinderella retelling story but also love shoujo romances and then i got apothecary diaries 8 and apothecary diaries 9 i'm just catching up with these volumes as they've been out for a little while and I actually had them ordered on Waterstones but they didn't ship so I ended up just cancelling them and getting them on sci-fi and if you hear that noise that is Suki playing with the bubble wrap <laughs> and yeah super excited to have these and continue the series I know the anime is coming out soon so super excited about that definitely check this out if you like strong female characters and kind of like political court intrigue stuff and then I got Cherry Magic 30 Years of Virginity Can Make You a Wizard, one of my favorite ongoing BL series. It's got some of the most cutest scenes and the tropes I like, which is office romances, of course. And yeah, I'm really excited that this series is going on for so long because it is one of my favorites. Definitely check it out if you like wholesome BL series. Okay, and then I got My Villain's Day Off. This one is a purchase that I got for it basically just the cute cover and also it's by Square Enix and I really like supporting Square Enix manga because they're one of my favorite publishers of course as you know they do Cherry Magic and Apothecary Diaries and they do My Happy Marriage which is three of the volumes I have here so you know I really like them so I got it and it is quite thin but I'm excited to try this out considering how expensive Square Enix manga is it is a little bit you know pricey on the wallet but I really like that studio so I am here to support them and I think this is basically about a villain who had the day off. I'm pretty sure it's pretty self-explanatory on the cover so it'll be interesting. It's probably one of those like 
Yakuza doing um, mundane things. It kind of has that vibe. So yeah. And then I got Business, Pro Business Proposal Volume 2. Just continuing this series. This one is really thick. But yeah, um, I really, really, really loved the K-drama for this. Like, it was one of my favorite K-dramas. And I'm so excited to read this awesome material. And then I got Villains Are Destined to Die Volume 4. Just continuously collecting this. Sad the spine is a little bit off. But it is what it is. But yes, super loving the manhua that's coming out recently and super excited to read this. I haven't actually started it, but I will. But everyone says like there's cliffhangers and stuff, so I'm a little hesitant to start it until there's a few more volumes out. But yeah, we'll see. Yeah. And some other things I got that aren't manga was this Sailor Saturn cute posket. Super, super cute. I love it so much. It is the Princess Saturn and it was on sale for $15.99 so I had to get it. But yes, super cute. And then I also got my pre-order of the Nia Automata A2 short hair Nendoroid. She's looking super cute. As you may or may not know or can see from over there, I have a little Nia shrine. Nia Automata is my favorite game of all time literally it's been my number one for like three years now and it stays on top but a2 is also one of my favorite characters in nia automata and i also love nia replicant which i've played and i have some nendros uh, of kane which is from nia replicant but yes i absolutely love this series so i had to get the nendroids yeah so this is everything i got in my little collective haul as you can see suki is playing with my hey he's playing with my uh paper opener but yeah but yeah this is everything i got i hope you enjoyed this small collective haul and yeah we'll see you in my next video bye